again with Forever Football Show in a fantastic week. It's World Cup week. As usual, we have Aaron Lane, Filippo Milano, and our guest. I don't know how why you came back. Apparently, you have fun. It. Yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm sleep deprived, but I'm here. Welcome okay. back, John. John Cook from Tech Flash. As a matter of fact, I have to review this to the crowd. Don't worry, I'm not going to review anything that you talk to you. <laughs> uh, I have to review that I thought that soccer was controversial, but last week I had uh, the privilege and the opportunity to go to one of the Tech Flash live events. Uh, debate on stage with a huge audience, more than 300 people attending, and that is controversy. We had a lot of fireworks. We were talking yeah. about technology as if it was religion, politics, and soccer. All That's in right. One. That's right. All passionate people in all different fields. So. When is your next Tech Flesh event? Uh, July 28th, but it's a little more casual. We're having a, actually a foosball tournament and a ping pong tournament. Is the foosball tournament singles or doubles? Doubles. I will win that thing. You should, you should enter. Yeah. <laughs> Roll the Brazilian colors. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I just need to find out my, 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 my hair now, my duet. Yes. <laughs> I, that was my major in college and grad school. <laughs> With minor in engineering and marketing later on. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we are here to talk about the World Cup, not about football. And we had a fantastic week. We'll go uh, group by group. Starting with Group A, I have to give the word and the floor to Filippo Milano because even though his Italy is not doing great, he's still happy. And why is that, Filippo? Yeah, I guess uh, happy is not the right word because I'm delighted by the first group. So France is offering me such good things every day. So first day in West versus uh, Messi when they were humiliated by Messi, in my opinion. And then um, uh, Anelka said something bad to Dominic, I don't want to repeat that. Everybody went to TV the day after crying, and today they stopped the training because they were fighting during the training. Yeah, they have images on TV. Yes. So anyway... Shameful situation in France. It's totally perfect for me. So that <laughs> makes my work up very good already. I'm, I'm so happy, guys. But I, I'm, I'm happy also for Messi because I guess they played very well, they are doing great soccer, and they deserve to win. Yeah, I, I thought Mexico is playing really well. Mexico, in the, in the space of two weeks, beat Italy for the first time in their history and beat France for the first time in their history. The last time that they had even tied, the last time that the French didn't win was in 66. So you can imagine the size and importance of this game and in the moment during the World Cup. Uh, talking about the first group, I have a, a question for you guys. Do you think that uh, Uruguay and Mexico are going to play hard the last game or just they will be happy with a tie? I think they could potentially just mail it in. Well, I, I, one, I, I one thought tie, about zero, that. Zero tie and they both go through. I thought about that, but they have to avoid Argentina. That's the motivation for them to play. The second place team in that group. The second place team in that group. So I think that that's the only thing that uh, makes France a little bit more interested in, in watching that game with a possibility. However, I think that South Africa will beat France. And the winner of that game actually has a chance to get through, amazingly. France, as bad as they've been through this World Cup, still has a chance to get, get through to the second stage. Yeah, that's amazing. The, the, first, the first group, the first stage is also forgiven. Yeah, I think maybe France has some chance, but South Africa, after they're losing for 3 nil, And their keeper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. have to score too many goals. Their keeper's out in the next game, Yeah, right? so. Yeah, so... And he was a good keeper in the, in the games I watched, so um, I think they, I think South Africa might be done. Yeah, Aaron. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I can definitely see France winning against South Africa. I, I, I don't think well of South Africa, even though it's a very, very poor French side. But um, and also, I think we could kind of be surprised and see France go through. Only because I think Uruguay and Mexico are going to be really fighting for that top spot, like you mentioned, to avoid Argentina. Uh, it's definitely important. I, I don't think that they're going to play for the draw. Uh, I think they're both going to be confident in their, their own playing ability and how they've been playing, and that they're going to go for the win, thinking that they can. They might draw, but that's not going to be... It's going to be a, a, a consequence. I think so. Now, the interesting thing about this World Cup is how the America, America countries are completely outperforming Europe. Europe. I mean, there was a lot to be talked about, the expectations about Africa doing well, 
Uh, unfortunately, they're not, and it might be the case that no African countries will advance. But Americas, on the other hand, the only country in all Americas who lost the game was uh, Honduras, and that's because they played against Chile. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. But again, don't, let's think about the historical thing, is that European team outside of Europe, they never won a World Cup. And again, uh, it, it's also this time, and I guess South, South American teams are doing very well, but uh, it's just because European teams are not doing very well. Yeah, I, I've been impressed with the South American team, so uh, I think Paraguay, I actually predicted them to get through, get, getting through the Italian group, we'll get to that later, but I, I, I think they were the highest qualifier in, their, in South America, so I... Brazil, Chile, and Paraguay. Yeah. And Paraguay was leading for the longest time. Look, a, a group that almost put Argentina out of the World Cup, you can imagine that there are strong countries and strong teams there. Yeah, I've been impressed with them, and uh, yeah, I think it's the storyline of the World Cup, and I'll just throw in another region that's doing well too, which is Asia with the Koreans and Japan, and if you go into uh, you know, New Zealand, we'll get into that later, but that region of the, of the world also has done well, so it's a total surprise. Uh, exactly. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Group B then. Are you satisfied? Did you, did you tease France enough already? Can I move on? I can, uh, I can stop here because they still have a chance. So I don't want to <laughs> no, right. And what about what about Argentina then? Uh, did everybody wake up early to see Argentina, Messi and Higuain show against Greece? Oh yeah. Yeah, I've been up early almost every day watching the game. So that's why I said I was sleep deprived. They're impressive. Uh, I think they're probably uh, the, the most impressive team of the cup so far, wouldn't you agree? Argentina? Yeah, Argentina. I, th I thought it's the uh, Holland, Brazil, and Argentina, all countries, all three countries with six points, uh, they're the ones who impressed me the most, and I, they were my calls from the, from the beginning. So I'm not surprised, uh, but I do think that countries like Italy and England, because England is, England is playing Italy style because of Capello. They're going to tie all the games in the first round, advance, and then surprise us. Yeah. It's going to it's going to be the same old story. Well, uh, I, I believe if they tie all the games in the first round, they very well may not advance. Oh, yeah, but so, no, but they can. They can. They, they can. They but, can. Which is incredible, but, but they can. Yeah. What do you think about Ibrahim? Was it a, was it an amazing performance, or he was also? sort of like lucky well position when Korea just failed. Well, I think Iguain's performance kind of speaks to Argentina's performance as well. Um, you know, they're definitely facing lesser opposition and uh, though Iguain is a great player, uh, I'm still a fan of uh, Diego Milito uh, and I, I think we'll really only see Argentina and Iguain's quality in the, these next rounds. I think this group stage like you mentioned um, earlier, it was kind of a warm-up, a, a tune-up yeah. for them, and, and was never going to be a, a true challenge or a true test. I agree. Uh, in Argentina, Argentina is uh, coming around the fact that they have Maradona in the, in the bench. Uh, I think there, there are a couple of things happening. They finally had time to uh, spend time and, and just be together for a while. Uh, and break a little bit of that image of the idol, of the god, because all these players in Argentina, they grew up uh, with Maradona being their god, and now they had time to be together, see the human side, and I think they're bonding very well, and getting fit, I think Argentina will be very dangerous in the next round. And another thing that we also thought was going to be a liability, Maradona calling the spotlight on himself, is actually easing the pressure on guys like Mar uh, Messi, uh, Iguain and so, so surprisingly, the Maradona effect reversed itself and I think it's working. Uh, you know, I, I totally agree with you, but I guess uh, in, the, in this show we said that it can be one of the two sides. Maradona can be the worst thing ever for Argentina, but it can be also the best thing ever. And that's what's going to happen. They are all together, just they won't win for Maradona, with Maradona. And, and I guess it was a good effect by Maradona. Yeah. You can still wait for Maradona to blow up at some point, though. I think, speaking to your point, there could still be some explosion there where things go haywire with that team. I think they're firing on all cylinders, though, and, uh, you know, I was impressed with Messi. I mean, with all the pressure coming into this cup, he didn't have, he didn't have the goals, but he's, he was a playmaker in every one of those goals. I mean, he was, he was lighting it up out there. I don't know if you had the chance to see Maradona 
um, shooting uh, free throw during the training. It, it's amazing. He's he's never, oh, yeah. it's, yeah. it's hilarious on the sideline when the ball comes yeah. over to him. You can just, he's like itching to get on the field. He's juggling it, flipping it up to the players for throw-ins. I mean, he wants to be out there. You can yeah. tell. So it's, it's pretty cool to see. Folks, we're going for a short break.